Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be changing forever. Hello, darling. Don't be shy. I promise not to bite until we've been formally introduced. My name is Shadowheart, loyal servant of Shah, goddess of darkness and loss. It didn't take too long after patch 7 of Baldur's Gate 3, which added official mod support for the modding community to completely and utterly break Baldur's Gate 3 in a way that is actually spectacular and amazing and has me super, super freaking excited for the future of the game. This could potentially be one of the greatest parting gifts that Larian could have given the community, but it's probably also kind of a mistake. Although people are already saying that it might be an intended mistake. But for, you know, I guess legal reasons, it's a mistake. It is essentially an infinite expansion to Baldur's Gate 3. But now hold on, because there's a catch. Two of them, actually. To catch up on things, a short summary here is that a user has unlocked the mod toolkit beyond what was intended, which includes part of the game that is not a stretch to suggest that Wizards of the Coast didn't want unlocked, given that it wasn't included in the base game. Level editing. What this means is that the modders can do a lot more with Baldur's Gate 3 mods than they could previously. In fact, one modder has already begun making Avernus in BG3. You know that DLC we had hoped to go to? And this is within just a few short weeks of patch 7 dropping. Level editing allows for an incredible expansion of the game. It allows the use of tools provided within the game, not unlike Witcher 3's Red Kit, or more relevant perhaps, Divinity Original Sin 2's DM mode. A DM mode that I desperately wanted to be a part of Baldur's Gate 3 to allow for the creation of your own campaign. Something that would have, of course, completed directly with Wizards of the Coast's own D&D virtual tabletop through D&D Beyond that they're currently working on. I mean, it's no shock that they used Asterion's virtual tabletop representation on their closed beta sign-up, after all. Now, to be clear, this the unlocking of this level editor does not mean that this is going to be as easy or as accessible as the Divinity Original Sin 2 GM mode was. That GM mode was a tool within the game that you just opened up and you kind of plugged and played and put little, you know, put little things here and there and you created your own campaign that way. It's a it's a GM mode that was famously used by Critical Role's Matt Mercer to run a campaign within Divinity Original Sin 2 years ago. In fact, that was actually how I found out who the hell Matt Mercer was. And I've actually used that GM mode quite a lot and found it to be extremely well done and very, very user friendly, if not very, very time consuming. That's not what this is. This requires a bit more knowledge, know-how, and external downloads. What this does mean though, is that talented modders are going to be able to make some incredible things. And I for one can't wait to see what comes from this. And not just for a Baldur's Gate 3 type campaign, but far beyond that. What kind of personal D&D campaigns can be made in this? One of the things that was great about having that in Divinity Real Sin 2 was you could create your own story. Things like this in general have me extremely excited about how long these games can live on, like the red kit for Witcher 3, to see what those talented individuals can come up with. And if any of the big mods we've been seeing, like Fallout London or the remake of Oblivion in Skyrim, are anything to be a, like to, as a go by, or Star Wars for Starfield, some of these mods are just absolutely freaking incredible, and I can't wait to see what happens. 
It's gonna be amazing. But I did say that there were two catches, right? Just, you know, to rain on the parade a little bit. The first catch is, of course, one of the biggest ones. Baldur's Gate 3 in many ways is driven by incredible actor performances. Cinematics using those performances like that captures their motions and the numerous heartfelt artistic expressions that came through from the diverse cast of characters that created Baldur's Gate 3, not to mention the writers behind it. This is going to be impossible to recreate, at least not with extensive resources. And I won't spend much time on this because some of the answers may just be, oh, just use AI. And to that, I just say, fuck, no, no. The artistry that was displayed by the actors of this game of Baldur's Gate 3 deserves to be respected in that way. So hopefully this won't be a thing, especially without the actor's consent to do so. Artistry like this from J.K. Simmons deserves its own place about a man who sold himself piece by piece. He had everything. A wonderful wife, a brilliant daughter. They lived not far from here. His wife died too young. Grief tore through their home like a thief, snatching away the scent of her hair, the rustle of her skirts, but the man did not break. He could not break. His daughter needed him whole, after all. She grew up, grew strong, challenged him, filled his heart with such joy it supplanted all sorrow. When she was killed, the man, he tried to remain whole. But it wasn't Possible. Do you understand? So don't go into the expect to get the exact same kind of quality that we had before. But there's a second catch. And this one, well, it might be more devastating. If we go back to the assumed reason why Larian didn't include a DM mode in BG3 like they did in Divinity, could this be something that Wizard of the Coast pursues to close up these level editing loopholes? Now, of course, there are other virtual tabletops out there, several of them, in fact. I actually years ago backed one called Tailspire, which is pretty incredible. But one of the biggest differences is, of course, the official nature. Baldur's Gate 3 is an officially licensed D&D Forgotten Realms product. From characters to creatures to locations, D&D Beyond's virtual tabletop, which they're currently working on, would also be an official product. Tailspire is not. I won't go too deep into the minutia here in part because it gets a whole lot of licensing stuff that honestly gets really super confusing when it comes to tabletops, especially after the whole debacle of Wizards of the Coast trying to change how that licensing works not that long ago with the open games license. But at the very least, these kind of editing tools in Baldur's Gate 3 provides a more direct competition to D&D's virtual tabletop and at best exists in kind of a, let's say, gray area. So let's just hope that these obstacles involved in making those levels through modding are enough of a deterrent and we get some incredible new places to play around with in Baldur's Gate 3 over the next few years. And perhaps it helps extend the life of the game in a way that Skyrim and the entire Elder Scrolls IP and Fallout IPs have benefited from dedicated modders doing things that just feel almost impossible, doing amazing things that revive these games, that give new life to them and really keep them in the mind's eye a lot longer than perhaps they would have been otherwise. So that would be my pitch about this. It actually has a tangible benefit for keeping this alive, keeping that love of these products alive, these IPs, these locations, these characters, that might be worth just looking the other way, wizards. Just look over there. Just keep looking that way. It's pretty. Leave our, leave our fun alone.
While we wait for these mods to complete though, you can jump right in now and use Larian's official mods and mod tools. Modding your game has never been easier, whether it's adding hairstyles or changing the UI or whatever else you want. New mods are being added all the time, so check back frequently to see if there's a mod that sounds like fun. They're very easy to turn on and off in your game, and it's just a really simple process. Now one of the things that was also in lock with this that wasn't actually supposed to happen is save editing. But holy crap, I really, really could have used a save edit not that long ago. A, a save editing feature that could have done a lot to help with events that happened in my honor mode run with Scratch and the Albert Cub. In fact, you can see that in this video right here.